welcome back. We're going to continue with chapter four today. And today we're going to be looking at the laws of motion. And we're going to start off by revisiting Galileo's experiment that we talked about way back in chapter two. Now, in chapter two, we talked about how Galileo proved or it came up with a concept that an object's natural state wasn't just at rest, but could also be in motion, depending on where it was, what it was doing, and, and if friction was acting on it or not. And we talked about this before in chapter two, where it's Galileo's experiment graphically, where if you never reach that final height, this object would continue forever and ever, ever. This thing would go forever. And that is, as long as there's no force acting on it to slow it down, to make it change its velocity negatively, to make it stop, it will go on forever. So in the absence of a force, this thing out could continue on. And so that kind of rewrote the rules, because before then, everybody knew that an object's natural state was a rest. Well, Isaac Newton basically took this work from Galileo and made it his first law of motion. And we're going to say that this is what's called the law of inertia, because by definition, a object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion until an outside force acts upon it. And an object's tendency to remain at rest or in motion is called inertia. And so I'm going to underline that. Okay? So it's a tendency. So, uh, and we're going to write this down, but I want you, this is something we have to remember. Mass is the equivalent, the physical equivalent of an object's inertia. Now, think about this. This pen that I'm carrying right here, this has a relatively small mass. In order to change its position from rest to, to not being at rest or being in motion, it takes very little amount of force. Whereas if you were trying to do the same that to me, I have a significantly greater mass, and therefore it would take a much larger force in order to get me up to that same speed. And so this is crucial to remember that mass is equivalent to inertia. I've got it down here on this slide. Okay? The more mass an object has, the greater its tendency to remain in the state that it's in. Okay? So more mass, okay, equals that greater inertia. So greater tendency to remain in its state. Quick reminder, we talked about this yesterday, but remember a net force is the vector sum of all the forces that are acting on the object. And we really need to make sure that we take into consideration all forces that are acting on an object at a certain period of time. And this is crucial. So remember yesterday when we did the chair, the person sitting in the chair and then the person pushing on them. The one thing I left off was friction. There is obviously friction because that it takes, you, you just don't touch somebody and they go flying off. There's obviously friction trying to inhibit that motion as well. And that's one of the things we're really going to have to pay attention to in our problems in order to make sure that we have all of those forces labeled. Well, remember, whenever we're talking about this force, we're really meaning the net force or the vector sum of all forces that can an object. Now, we did bring this up yesterday in our notes. We talked about a net force, when a net force acts on an object, so a non-zero net force. If the net force, and I'm going to write this as, as F net, if the net force is zero newtons, and that's zero newtons, not the word on, okay, then this is a state called equilibrium. And what that means is that the object is not going to change its state. So if it's in rest and the net force is zero, so it's in equilibrium, it's going to remain at rest. If it's in motion and it's in equilibrium, it will continue in motion. Now when we talk about emotion, please note that I'm talking about it's going to be moving at a constant speed, a constant velocity in the same direction. If it's turning, 
that's not that's a change in its velocity and therefore there would be a net force acting on it okay so again the key thing to remember if the if the acceleration if that is if a net is equal to zero meters per second squared then f net must equal zero newtons okay and that in itself is equilibrium now that's the case of the first law of motion the second law of motion looks at what happens if the net force is not zero if you are not in equilibrium okay and so the amount of acceleration of an object is going to be dependent upon both the force and the mass of that object so if we have a larger force and we're going to demonstrate this tomorrow but we're going to say the acceleration is proportional to the force if so as you increase the amount of force we're going to increase the amount of acceleration we're going to say that the mass has an inversely proportional relationship to the acceleration so the larger the mass the greater its inertia the smaller the acceleration it's going to have now the one thing i do want to point out this might be the first time you've seen this but this little symbol right here stands for proportional to and this shows a direct relationship and just a quick reminder if we were to graph that it would look like this and so well, it's a straight line mine's not but you get the idea there we go that's slightly better so if the force goes up the acceleration goes up this one down here this is an inverse relationship and again if we were to graph that that would look like this and so as the mass goes up the acceleration goes down and we're going to talk about this and do this in a in more sample problems and stuff like that so what we can do is we can now put those two things together into one full thing when an unbalanced so we're going to have a net force let me actually let's break this in when an unbalanced or net force acts on an object the direction of motion is, is in the same direction as that net force so if i push something east it's not going to accelerate west it's going to go to the east and that acceleration is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass and so now we have a new equation that the acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass now you will often see me rewrite this as f equals ma okay but just know that really we're talking about the net acceleration the net force and later on is going to come into play divided by the net mass the total amount of mass now the units here obviously force that is a newton which remember is a kilogram meter per second squared my mass that's measured in kilograms and so if we take it what that's going to leave us with is meters per second squared which conveniently is our units for acceleration now our last slide today is going to be on newton's third law of motion this is known as the law of action and reaction and what we're going to say basically is that for every action or force there's an equal and opposite reaction or force and what this means is that forces come in pairs okay? so i'm going to highlight that's crucial forces come in pairs okay and i'll give you a great example now i'll end with this example and we'll talk about it more in detail tomorrow but a great example is this is that if i take a hammer and i hit a nail it's very obvious that the hammer exerts a force on that nail what's not so obvious is the fact that the nail must exert a force back on the hammer and the reason for that is the reason you know that is because if you didn't the hammer wouldn't slow down that hammer would continue going forward at the same velocity and it would not slow down now i've done that or i've gone to pound a nail into a piece of drywall and i thought i'm at the stud and my hammer goes boom, through the wall because it didn't provide that backward force in order to stop my hammer that turned out to be a bad thing 
So we'll investigate this. We'll talk about this again tomorrow a little bit. But again, remember, they always come in pairs. And this is true not only for contact forces, but also field forces. So we'll end here. I'll see you tomorrow. Everybody have a fantastic night. See you later. Bye.